I recently decided to shoot some 35mm panoramas on the Pentax 6.7 again. And with Christmas approaching and the city full of people, I thought this would be a good place to start the role of Kodak Vision 500T. So I met up with my friends Josh and Damon and just wandered around trying to find interesting shots to take as the sunset and blue hour approached and plenty of people flocked into the city to see the big Christmas display. The entire roll was shot using the 55mm f4, which is equivalent to about 28mm on full frame, and works well for this format. So if you haven't seen my previous video on this method, I use 35mm film, in this case it's bulk loaded Vision 500T, which I then load into the Pentax using these 3D printed adapters that I found on eBay. That's then taped to some 120 backing paper that's custom cut, and loaded as if it's 220 film in the Pentax 6.7 in order to take advantage of the longer film length of 35mm. I pretty much followed the method of one of the videos that I found on YouTube, which I will link in the description in case you want to check it out. I'll talk more about developing and scanning later in the video. Unfortunately, I lost a few shots on this roll due to a fairly common problem that is happening with my Pentax 6.7, whereby the shutter opens but then doesn't close again, especially in lower speeds or bulb exposures in the case of my camera. Luckily, there's a workaround for it, which I was able to use and continue shooting the roll. It's apparently due to an electromagnet inside that you can try cleaning using some common fix methods that I've found online. I've tried it a couple of times, but it hasn't worked for me. We ended the shooting session in Chinatown in this alley where Damon ran into a guy dressed as a cowboy and took his portrait with his flash. Definitely check out some of his and Josh's work, I'll link their Instagrams in the description. I got this last shot in the city where I had Damon stand underneath the lit doorway. So this turned out to be one of my favourite shots on the roll and definitely of the night out shooting in the city. I think this kind of scene really takes advantage of Vision 500T's strength with artificially lit scenes at night. So. It was time to head home, and I decided to finish the roll off another night. Check out this spot. I think it'll make for a good panorama, but it's a little bit difficult to work around because it's on a highway with all the cars passing. And I'm taking a tip out of Nick Carver's book and using one of these high-vis vests. I'll probably just overexpose a little bit for reciprocity and because film can handle the highlights a bit better. So, um, got the cable release and I'm gonna go meet her up and take the shot. So I'm gonna meet her at f11, about eight second exposure. And because of that problem, I may have mentioned earlier in the video where the, the shutter opens but doesn't close, my method to work around that is pretty much to use a black cloth or something, put it over the lens to end the exposure in case it doesn't end when I let go of the, the shutter trigger because um, that's the only way to then end it and I have to then pull the battery to make the shutter close again. It's a complicated thing, but it's the only way I can work around it because I don't want to lose any more shots on this roll. And I'm going to use mirror lockup. So now I just need to wait for the cars. Here we go. Six, seven, eight. Yep, so the shutter didn't close again. I'm gonna use that method. Take the camera off. I have to unscrew the tripod plate and then remove the battery in order to close the shutter. But I don't know if I wanna to pay to service this thing because this only really happens at slower speeds at the moment, but it probably will need a service eventually. So I'm moving the, the tripod plate out of the way and you'll hear it now. When I remove the battery, you'll hear the shutter closing. There you go. So that will end the exposure and hopefully no other light came in because I had that cloth in front of the lens. This one turned out to be another one of my favorite shots on the roll. The sky and darker areas are a little bit underexposed and grainy. So it might've been better if I shot it earlier when the sky was brighter to balance with the shops 
or on a less cloudy day. But despite that, I still like it, the shops are well exposed, and there's plenty of detail for 35mm film. And just as I took the shot, it started to rain, so... I don't know, I might cross the road, see if I can get some other exposures, some side-ons or something. As soon as I crossed the road, a coach bus parked right in front of the scene. But luckily they didn't stay for too long and moved on shortly after this. Without me having to pay off the driver. So honestly, I don't know if I like this angle more or the previous one. I think these side-on shots also work really well and they're a bit better exposed. Let me know what you guys think. The film was developed at home in C41 chemistry using Cine Steel's 2 bath powder kit and the remjet removed beforehand using washing soda. I've made a video all about this method which I'll put a card for and a link in the description. I then scanned it using my 5D Mark IV as usual and the new negative supply Profilm Carrier 35 which has interchangeable masks including an X-Pan one. This makes it super quick and easy to swap between formats ranging from half frame to regular frames to X-Pan and even including a full border mask option. And because this method exposes onto the sprockets, this allows you to scan all the way to the edges. Conversion was done in the latest Negative Lab Pro software. I'll put a link to this if you want to get a free trial. I've covered how I batch convert color negative in a previous video. I'll link that and anything else that was covered in this video. Whether it's the chemistry or developing accessories that I use, my previous videos on parts of this process, and of course the Negative Supply Pro Film Carrier 35. And at the time of recording, I have a code that you can use for a discount on Negative Supply's site. So I appreciate it if you decide to use that or any of the links in the video. It helps me out. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you have any other questions and I'll catch you on the next episode of Pushing Film.